Hey, what's up, everyone? My name's Lee, and I'm here with a Midas M32, the uh, twin brother, but better looking than the X32. And we got something really cool planned. I'm gonna throw together a mix on this console in less than a half hour. So a lot of people have this console. I think this and the X32 are the most popular digital audio consoles in the world. Behringer Midas, congratulations. So we thought we would uh, show you how I would put together a mix with my band on this console. So some things I've done ahead of time to get started are, everything's already labeled, everything's already routed, I've got a couple effects already set up. Um, let me just walk you through everything that we're doing and what I've got to deal with, and then I'm just gonna go channel by channel and set everything up from scratch. So the band, it's a modern worship band from my church. We've got drums, we got some tracks, bass guitar, one keyboard, two electric guitars, one acoustic guitar, and a handful of vocals. For effects, I've got one drum verb, a vocal tap delay, and a vocal verb, and my subs are on an aux. So I'm only looking at four auxes here. I'm using the DCAs in the center of the console, drums, loops, bass, keys, guitars, vocals, effects, and then a band DCA. There's the master gas pedal. And my user defined keys, I've set these up as uh, the send for the tap delay on the vocals if I were gonna change songs and mute groups. That's really all we've done. There's no um, inserts of anything like that. I'm gonna use everything on board. And I think that's it. Let's dive in, the clock's ticking, here we go. So I'm gonna start with drums. Kick drum first. I've got two kick mics, but I think I'm only gonna use one to save some time. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna EQ it first and then I'm gonna put a gate on it. I don't know that that's important to do it in that order, but that's what I like to do. So we'll go to the EQ, I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, and then right there, see, I, as soon as I cut that huge amount of low mids out, it kind of tightened up, got a little less muddy. That's what I like. And then I like the attack out of this already. I'm gonna add some more on the top end, maybe cut out some of that 3K clickiness that I don't like too much. So they just tame that a little bit and then I'm gonna add a little more air on top. Okay, so here's on and off real quick for you. Okay, now I'm gonna put the gate on and then we'll do subs dead last. So really important, attack on the gate needs to be as fast as possible because if this is too slow, it'll take high end off of, um, off the sound of your kick drum. So check this out. Look at that, 30 millisecond attack just nuked it. Okay, so I've got the hold and release time set pretty tight. I want it to actually sound like a kick drum. There's not much resonance happening. I may change that later if, if this gets messed up, but that's just where I'm gonna start. All right, now I'm just gonna roll the subs in. You probably won't be able to hear that at home. Um, let's see. You know what, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn those back off. I'm gonna add a bunch of low end just to the EQ and see how much we can get out of just that. Okay, so let's listen to that on and off. 
Okay, huge difference. And you're probably hearing that gate act up, so let's go check that out. Okay, I think that's a good start. Now let's go to snare drum. Oh, I should also say that kick mic is a Sennheiser 901. That's important. So that's why that all that attacks in there without me having to add a ton to it. There's a 52 on here. Listen to this. That's probably more what you're used to if you're just dealing with one mic. I like just the 901 if I'm only going to use one. All right, so we got a Beta 57 on top of a Black Beauty five and a half inch drum with a coated head. We're going straight back to EQ. I'm gonna cut out a bunch of like six, seven, or 800. That's usually the first thing I'll do. So check that out, just that difference. And then I like a little sizzle on top. Off. Great, now let's add some compression to really get that thing to snap. Turn this guy on. Okay, so I'm gonna roll this threshold down so you can really hear it. And to me, the, the magic of the compressor on a snare drum is about how much it's compressing, but the attack time. Again, because it's such a transient, we really want that time to be perfect so that we let just enough through that we get a really nice crack, but not that it's so fast that you don't get any punch of it at all. So I'll show you, show you each way here. So that's zero milliseconds attack, and I'll slow it down. You hear the difference? See that? And I'm just rolling that threshold down. And I, I'm not I'm trying not to watch this, but I'm listening to the hi-hat in the background. I don't want that to get too weird. And just the overall volume of the drum, the ratio and the attack time are really what I'm messing with now. And, and the threshold, actually. That's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to add some gain to get some volume back out of that. Okay. So here's compressor on and off. So there's the drum flat. Okay, now let's add some reverb. So I love ambience reverbs. SPX 990 preset ambience is something I always go to first. There's a reverb on the M32 called ambience. So I loaded that up. Let's go find it. Effects number one, there we go. I've got this set to two seconds with like 14 milliseconds of pre-delay and I think I left everything else as it came up on this. Okay, I'm digging that. Uh, we just burned up a lot of time on two channels, so let's uh, let's speed up a little bit. Let's go to snare bottom. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, here I'm going to start using high pass filter a lot, EQ, and lots of compression.
Okay, so same thing, cutting out a lot of low mids, adding a little sizzle in. Now let's go to compression. All right, and some verb. And blend these in. I want more top end out of that. Yeah, some of that. There we go. Okay, kick and snare, good hi-hat. I'm just gonna throw a high-pass filter on this really quickly and hopefully it doesn't get annoying later. We'll come back to that. He's not even playing the hi-hat during this part. All right, toms. Let's find a section where they're looping. I believe right here. Okay, again, EQ, then a gate. Right there, 300, just cutting a bunch out, and let's add some top end. Great, and now let's gate it. And open that release up. Fast attack. Okay. Adverb. Great. I'm going to pan this to the right here. And same thing to the floor tom. Let's go EQ. Actually, I want the high pass filter that rack tom. There we go, just tighten that up a little. Floor tom, high pass, a tad, just a little bit. And EQ. Oh yeah. Listen to this off. Great, now it's the gate. Okay, so that's really hard to tell if that's gonna close because he hasn't stopped hitting it. So I need to find another part to see if that's gonna actually translate. Let me back this up here. Turn this off. Okay, I think that's gonna do for now. Most of the time I end up going back to the gates when all this is done and fine tuning those thresholds. I'm sure that would probably happen here. Let's add some verb. And pan that guy a little to the left. Okay, overheads. And we are not paired here because you can only pair one direction on this console, so that's okay. So we're gonna do this twice. So high pass filter first. I'm gonna do both sides at the same time. And EQ, I'm gonna cut out a lot of that boxiness again, so.
Cool. Same thing. Yep, so we need to find out how those crash symbols are going to do. That All we're hearing is toms right there. That's a little, like, ice picky, so I'm going to cut out some of that high mid. That side's not so bad. Yeah, I don't know that it needs any, so let's pan these hard left and hard right. Listen to that. Okay, full kit. Okay, so far so good. Takes care of the drums. We've got tracks. These sound great coming right off the tracks machine. I hope yours do too. If not, fix that. That's a super easy problem to fix. Um, I'm just going to make sure the levels are right. So probably just some high pass filtering. And if I need to trim to get the uh, fader up to zero. So let's check this. Yeah, they're definitely hot. So let's go trim these down. I'm going to go 10 dB just as a rough. Whoops, just did it to the wrong channel. How many of you done that before? Man, it needs more than 10. 15. All right, that's about right. And I've got a beats track here. Take that down 15, should match. Okay, bass guitar. Okay, it actually doesn't sound too bad. So a little bit of high pass filter, not much at all. And some compression. I'm going to go limiter on this guy. So like 20 to one. And then add some volume. That sounds good to me. And then I have a dirty bass channel. Check this out. So I'm going to high pass this, get the low end out. and low pass. Put that back in there. Something like that. This is really gonna help that you hear the notes of the bass guitar. So our primary source of the bass with some of this dirty, check this out. Where you, can, where you can really tell is when this is in the mix. So I'm gonna pull this out. Here's everything together so far. Okay, pretty cool. Keys, next. Again, these sound good, just coming right off the keyboard rig. I'm just gonna hard pan these. And, hey, I think I can link these. They're in the right spots. So let's go, there we go, link. 17 to 18, yes. Beautiful. Okay, 
Okay, that sounds good. And I'm gonna trim these way back, like 18. Okay, that's cool. Now I'm gonna listen to everything again. Okay, guitars. Ooh, I can link these two. Actually, I've got two stereo guitars, a rhythm and a lead. I'm just gonna use one side off of each, just because I'm just gonna high pass these. So I cut that up to 130. So that may seem aggressive, but I think it's fine. Um, let's listen to the other one. Oh, he's using two amps, so I gotta pick which one I want. I think I want that brighter one and I'll just knock some of the high end off. So let's high pass that first. And trim the crap off of that. Okay, so that shrilly stuff I wanna try and knock down. Okay, acoustic guitar. And then we're gonna go back and really massage in all these levels. I'm just trying to get everything roughly into a good spot. Acoustic. Let's see, mute the other guitars. Cool. High pass filter first. I'm hearing that like mid range stuff that needs cut. More trimming. Okay, and compression. Now I do like fast attack, fast release on uh, an acoustic. Okay, the band's done. Vocals. We're just gonna go to the lead vocal first. Okay, definitely high pass filter. And then we're gonna go EQ, then compression. Okay, all the junk's out, but there's still some low mid, definitely, that's obnoxious. With him we will reign forever. Oh, praise the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Sing hallelujah. Open up the ancient doors. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so that's cleaned up quite a bit. Now, compression. And I'll go like three or four to one. Super fast release. I'm just trying to make it sound like a, an 1176. And medium attack. As nations rise to glory, heaven breaks in glorious light. Oh, yeah. And with him we will. Okay, I hear that pumping a lot, so I'm just gonna fiddle with this while she's blasting away. Jesus Christ, oh yes, sing hallelujah. Open up the ancient doors, oh hallelujah. Come and 
Okay, so that's better. So it's not normally what I would do, but I think it's working. It's a lower ratio, um, medium attack, 16 milliseconds. It's less noticeable to me. Okay, and now let's add some verb. I don't even remember what I dialed in here. Let's see what it sounds like. Listen to that trail. That's actually pretty good. Maybe just a little long. Here we go. Plate reverb. Yeah, 3.4 seconds. Let's just dial that back. Okay, I'm going to go to the aux that's sending to this. Let's see and cut some off of that guy. It's, it needs like a high pass filter on that. There's already one on it, but I'm gonna crank that up. Let's go. Oh, frequency. Let's see what this sounds like. Oh, Jesus Christ, oh yes, sing Okay, I think that's better. It was causing the vocal to get muddy. So I just put a high pass filter on the send to the reverb. That's different than high pass filtering the return. So the low end info didn't even get to the reverb, if that makes sense. All right. Uh, tap delay. Already got her sent to that. Tempo should be already good. This is pretty straightforward. It's just a high pass and a low pass filter. <laughs> Okay, cool. Now I got everything set. I feel like I can go back from the beginning, unmute all the band, and start getting those levels really dialed in. So here goes that. Okay, those feel good. Now drums and loops together. Add bass. Cool guitars. So I'm gonna add some level to that. It's kind of disappearing on me. You know what, maybe some top end of that will help.
Okay, so only thing I'm really hearing now is maybe that kick drum's a little too clicky. So I'm gonna back that off. Think her vocal's too muddy. We'll check that out. Turn the effects off. Rain forever. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Oh yes. Sing Okay, I feel like that's in a pretty good spot. That's about as fast as I could possibly move on the M32. Um, that's actually the first time I've ever done that on this console. Um, I'm pretty impressed with it, to be honest. I know thousands of churches out there have this console, and if you've bought this thing and think and wonder if I made the right decision or not, I mean, you probably did. For what you get out of this console and for what we were just able to do, it's pretty impressive to me. Hope you enjoyed.